So we are in Hilchas Talmud Torah, in chapter one, in Halacha number eight. Oh, so, so very very practical Halacha. So let's see. <clears throat> uh, every Jewish man is obligated to study Torah, whether he is poor or rich, uh, of healthy or uh, and complete body or and afflicted and uh, by, by difficulties. Whether he is young or he is old man, whose strength uh, has diminished, even if he is a poor man who derives his livelihood from charity and begs from door to door, even if he is a husband uh, and a father of a children, he one second sorry, next page, he, he's what? he must establish fixed time for Torah study during the day and night, as Yehoshua one eight command. You shall think about it day and night. Okay. So, I mean, halacha is not long, but uh, the explanations are uh, very deep. <coughs> so, let's start. Every Jewish man is obligated to study Torah. Commentary. This represents the second aspect of the myths of Torah study. Studying oneself. So, one, one uh, last time we said about uh, learning about uh, teaching children who is taking priority, maybe you, maybe son who is smart, and do you have to pay, do, don't have to pay for a tutor? Okay, so now we're talking about uh, the person himself. Okay, forget about your son, for example, he, he's not married yet, he doesn't have a son yet, uh, okay, so all of the, he, he's too young himself, he's 15, 15, 17 years old, okay, so what is the story? <clears throat> so every Jewish man is obligated to study Torah, whether he is poor or rich. Commentary. Yoma 35b states, uh, Hill um, obligates the poor in Torah study. Rabbi Elazar uh, ben uh, Harsom obligated the rich. Very interesting. Hill obligated the poor. Rabbi Harsom obligated the rich. The Talmud elaborates. Hill would work and earn... Uh, uh, Partek, a coin of a little value daily. Half he would give to the watchman uh, at the hall of study, and half uh, he would use uh, for his livelihood and his uh, uh, that of his family. Okay, so coin split in two, right? One half of the coin for uh, I, mean, I mean it's not half of the coin. I mean it's, uh, half of the salary, right? Uh, for uh, Torah study and half of the family support. Very interesting. One day he could not find work. The watchman at the entrance did not let uh, him enter, and so hung, um, hung himself over, or so he hung himself over the window to hear the words of the living God from Shemaya Shema and Shemaya and Aftalion. So it was uh, just uh, details. It was actually on the roof. It was like uh, <clears throat> skylight, right? Uh, and he he was uh, peeking in, while listening in. And uh, what happened? Oh no, it does not say. It. So the, it starts snowing. Uh, basically, they uh, it was Shabbos, but they to, took him down from the roof, and they had to revive him and do all of these uh, beautiful things. And they accepted uh, as a permanent student into the yeshiva, right? But uh, he was very poor and did not stop. Okay, I don't have money. Okay, what can I do? There is a policy not to get uh, in without money. What can I do? And uh, I'm going to listen in. From the roof. In a contrast, Rabbi Lazar ben Kharson was extremely wealthy. So he, he was poor. Um, the hill, uh, hill was poor. So he was able to say, okay, I'm I'm in. Uh, I, I know I was also I'm also poor. So that's why I can uh, I can tell you what to do. But uh, many times a person who is rich, he's. Uh, uh, I mean, he he has everything and uh, or not even. Uh, not so rich people as uh, i mean i told you i think i work with people with this very poor country it's like for them like everything it's like uh, i don't know it's uh, very very difficult very like they're so poor it's unbelievable so i, I cannot tell them many, many things right so we try to always find for them the lenient the most lenient opinion possible you understand so i i cannot tell them do this and that so because because of the money constraint. <clears throat> in, uh, 
in a contrast, Rabbi Lazar ben Kharson was extremely wealthy. So, but wealthy, wealthy person can't tell what wealthy people what to do, right? His father left him 1,000 villages and, on land and 1,000 sheep at, at the sea. So, not too many people have to live in 1,000 villages, right? <clears throat> Each day, he would take a sack of flour on his shoulder and go from city to city to study Torah. Uh, throughout the entire life, he did not go to see them, the villages and sheep, <laughs> but rather sat and studied Torah the entire day and the entire night. He said, "I don't, I don't care what uh, what they're going to bring me, like uh, and another piece of meat, like uh, what, what I'm going to get from this uh, 1,000 villages, or 1,000 sheep." Okay. So, but this Torah, yeah, I'm going to get a lama. I'm going to get connection. Be, be, I'm going to get connected to Hashem in this world, right? The, the only way to connect to Hashem in this world through the studying Torah and doing mitzvahs, no other way. <coughs> uh, so continue uh, with Rambam. Whether he is poor or rich, uh, uh, of healthy and complete body, or afflicted uh, by, by difficulties, right? So Baba Mitzvah of 84b relates that Rabbi Lazar ben Shimon was afflicted by severe physical difficulties. Nevertheless, he continued to persevere in dedication to Torah study. In his dedication to Torah study. Indeed, Yeruvin 54a um, counseled that Torah study will help a person with a health problem recover. So that's, uh, that's what the Talmud says. If you have a headache, what should you do? Or you study Torah. Oh, it's simple. But if you have toothache, study Torah. Handache, all of these aches, you go and study Torah and it should help. <clears throat> so one other like, simple, like logical explanation. So since you, you know, you're not thinking about, uh, about your pain, about your struggling, you're involved uh, like in gross in the Torah study, so you, you, don't, uh, you, you don't pay so much attention, so you feel bad. Right? But, uh, but spiritual, uh, like... Um, Answer that Hashem says, "Look, uh, my my son, my daughter is trying to study Torah. So as uh, and uh, I, Hashem has a rule, the reward for one mitzvah is another mitzvah. So he or she wants to study Torah. So I have to take this pain away. Why? Right? Why? Because uh, that's a reward. So they can study more Torah. So very very simple. Right? No focus, focus. It's very it's uh, very simple. Fifty five. <clears throat> so uh, let's uh, let's do this sentence again. Uh, study Torah. So he must. Uh, every Jewish man is obligated to study Torah, whether he is poor or rich, he, uh, of healthy and complete body, or afflicted by difficulties, whether he is young, right, or old, or, or old man, whose strength has diminished. Young, fifty-six, uh, and his use um, exuberance might prevent him from concentrating on the studies. Like like uh, little kids, they they jump here, right? They they can uh, they cannot uh, sit on, on the uh, in one place. Or even uh, uh, like teenagers, it's also not so not so easy. Young younger people, they think about uh, all of these other things. They are not allowed to think. Uh, so yeah, so it's hard to, for them to concentrate on the, on, on the Torah study. But but the formula is uh, the answer to to all of them is exactly the same. As Rambam said, uh, it, every Jewish man is obligated. It's not when I'm going to have time. If I'm going to have time, I have to work so much. Okay, you have to work so much. But first of all, before working so much, you're obligated to study Torah.